You're listening to the string quartet that I composed in 1995. In this film, I'll tell you about some of the composers and ideas that influenced me in the creation of this piece. If you look at the four parts, you will notice that each one is a different length. At the end of each part is an instruction to repeat it a different number of times. As the parts repeat at different times, they move out of sync with one another. It takes 210 bars for all parts to align again. This diagram gives you a good idea of the proportions at work. This approach to composition creates some unique challenges. For example, when composing the viola part, if I change a note here, it needs to be changed in all these positions too, and once changed there, perhaps it may not fit with the cello part here, so I change a note in the cello part, and it's therefore changed here too. And now perhaps this part doesn't work so well for the violin, and so on. As the piece goes on, the parts are less and less in sync with one another, so the homophonic texture at the start gives way to overlapping notes. One of the chief influences on my composing into this structure was Steve Reich. He discovered phasing, that is to say, two parts moving gradually out of sync with one another while working with tape loops. Reich then applied these approaches to notated music. In clapping music, Reich took a repeated rhythmic pattern and rotated one note in one part every 12 bars. In piano phase, Reich put the phasing responsibility in the hands of the performers, asking them to move from one pattern to the next over a set period of time gradually, more like the tape itself. Of course, the phasing in Reich's Easy Works is nothing like the large-scale phasing in my quartet. While Reich's phases happen with short, repeated cells, mine happen over a longer period of time. To hear them clearly, you'd need to listen to the quartet many times, while Reich's are immediate. In addition, Reich's phasing creates interest with two or more patterns that are nearly identical, while the structure of my quartet has four different parts. Reich's compositions only influence the structure of the quartet. It's not actually a similar minimalist piece at all. But I had learned from a composer with whose aesthetic I strongly identified, Howard Skempton, that, and I quote, it's only by putting structure first that you can create something strong enough to survive. In actual fact, I haven't explored this structural device as much as I'd like to yet. A few years before I thought of it, I was lucky enough to perform in a recreation of a 16th century Florentine intermedi in a Christopher Wren church in London. In this work, small ensembles were positioned in galleries above, behind, to the sides and in front of the performers, creating incredible antiphonal effects. When I first thought of these large-scale phasing structures, I imagined them being performed by a whole orchestra, in such a setting, not just with parts phasing, but whole instrumental sections. Thinking on such grand scales of time and space was something I'd learned from the study of composers such as John Cage, 
Morton Feldman, and Lamont Young, who had each written pieces of music or organised sound to be performed over long periods of time. I also discovered those experimental composers through my study and analysis of Skempton's music. Skempton believes in leaving some elements, such as dynamics, expressive techniques, even rhythms of his music open, so that the performer could make decisions about those elements in the moment of performance. Similarly, the string quartet contains only an initial dynamic, no articulation marks or phrasing, and the instruction, dynamics and phrasing should be added in performance. One could argue that leaving out these elements is an abrogation of part of the composer's work, or that unsympathetic players may not make good decisions during performance, but experimentalists have felt that such an approach brings out the best of performers. Michael Nyman, for example, said the performer should not interpret in a particular way, but should be engaged in the act of interpretation. And Lamont Young said, if we have already determined in advance the frequencies we're going to use, and we allow only certain frequency combinations, certain chords which we have determined harmonious to our ears, then we find that as soon as one or two people have started playing, the choices left are greatly reduced and limited, so that each performer must be extremely responsible. Consider this excerpt from Howard Skempton's Surface Tension. When ensembles perform my string quartet, they often tell me that despite the simplicity of the parts, it is one of the most difficult pieces they have performed as an ensemble, having to keep track of their relative positions, add rubato and interpret the music based on how it is changing around them. And so the parts of the string quartet move in and out of sync with one another over 12 to 18 minutes, depending on the tempo they choose, to finally meet again only at the end of the piece. <laughs> 